Welcome. I'd like to do a brief overview of uh, supervision, DEP, user approved MDM, and kind of what they all they all mean uh, for users of FileWave. Uh, first off, um, if you're not already enrolling your Mac devices in MDM, you're definitely going to want to be doing that. And one of the main reasons for that uh, is that, uh, particularly with Big Sur and above, uh, they is the only way to deploy profiles uh, to the machines uh, without the users having to intervene. Uh, prior to that, you were able to push out profiles uh, without having to uh, have the have the users intervene. But uh, additionally, there are many features, uh, special features that are available uh, only through the MDM, such things as uh, pushing out apps to devices based on uh, the devices as opposed to uh, user uh, deployment, not needing to use a Apple ID uh, to deploy apps, uh, things like that. Um, so it's a very uh, good idea to do, and if you're not doing that already, you'll definitely want to. Uh, very similar to what happens on the iOS side. Um, as I mentioned with Big Sur now, it's really required uh, that you want to be able to do that. You'll find if you're not MDM enrolled, uh, you will have trouble pushing out those uh, profiles and, and such. Um, that being said, how can you get your devices into MDM on the Mac side? And there are two ways of doing that. Both have been around for a very long time. One is using the device enrollment program, or I may also use the word Apple deployments. Uh, and what that basically means is using the Apple School Manager or Apple Business Manager, uh, you could essentially take your machines that Apple knows you have purchased. Uh, you can assign them to go through the setup assistant. Uh, on a clean machine out of the box, and the machines will enroll themselves into the MDM, pull down the agent for FileWave, uh, and then you will start uh, being part of our system and can pull down software, assign uh, apps, and all that other good stuff. Um, the other way is what we call over-the-air enrollment. Um, so this is the more traditional way of going to a website uh, that would refer to your URL of your FileWave server, uh, and you can manually, essentially over-the-air, enroll the device. Uh, you may or may not be prompted for credentials depending on how you've set that up. Uh, and uh, the uh, other option you have along a similar route is that you can also would use what's called a enrollment profile. Uh, and that enrollment profile will let you essentially double click it. Uh, it will then uh, pull down all the pieces it needs to enroll the device. Uh, depending how you've done that, uh, generally speaking, that will also pull down the agent as well if you've set up uh, DEP as well. Uh, regardless of where the clients are in it or not. Um, that being said, uh, when you use the second method, it will ask you on all operating systems uh, greater than 10.13.4 uh, is whether you want it to be user approved. And generally the answer to that question is yes. Uh, user approved, you can kind of think of it a little bit like supervision on the, um, on the iOS side. There are certain features, the special features uh, that you can use in MDM uh, you can use FileWave to push out certain features that are only available if the devices are uh, set up as user approved. Uh, and that basically, uh, as long as these devices are your organization's devices, you're going to want to go with that choice. Um, so ideally, obviously, the easiest way to bring them in is through uh, the device enrollment program or Apple deployments, but you do have that second option as well. And it's really going to depend on your situation. Now, um, with 10.13.4, Apple introduced the concept of user-approved MDM. And what does that mean? That means approval means that they're corporate owned, as I mentioned, and that there are more features available. Uh, of particular interest are going to be things like single sign-on uh, extension you can manage. You can manage uh, kernel extensions as well as the system extensions, uh, which is basically referring to um, Catalina and Big Sur and a couple different things you can do with, the, um, with, with those extensions. Uh, but also, uh, such things as managing file vault, which includes the escrow uh, key storage, as well as lights out management on those devices that support it. Uh, but most importantly, and the most popular one are what we call the TCC or privacy profiles. Uh, as many of you have been discovering probably over, over the years, uh, Apple has added an ability to greatly control uh, what privacy policy settings are, are set by default. Examples would be rather than prompting people every time about whether it can have a file can have access uh, to the whole hard drive, you can grant that. Uh, these things can only be granted via MDM, uh, and they only can be done if user-approved MDM is on. So again, 
choice one you have to do is decide do you want them to be in MDM, which the answer should be yes. Uh, and then the second piece is whether you want uh, the uh, devices that have user approved MDM to take advantage of these extra features. Um, and again, as I mentioned earlier, there are two ways of, of bringing those into, um, into that user approved model. Automatically, when you're using Apple deployments or DEP, they will be user approved automatically out of the box um, when you run through that process. You can also run them through manually by enrolling, by going to the URL, as I mentioned, or by, um, by running the uh, enroll, or master enrollment profile. Uh, what you will find, though, is when you do that second method, it will prompt you to accept uh, that, and the device will say you're, you're, you're now, it's user approved, essentially. Uh, you can check this if you look at my uh, screen here. Uh, on the left-hand side, you can see I have two devices. Uh, one VM is in DEP, the other one is not in DEP. You can see the one above is one that I enrolled manually and it says user approved enrollment on this last line here. Uh, and in this other one here, which is DEP, uh, it says DEP enrollment. Uh, in both cases, uh, enrollment approved by user is set to true here and it's set to true as well here. So that means I do have that approval in both cases. Um, so I get access to both of those advanced features. It really depends how you want your workload to work. Now, uh, I will talk briefly about the Apple deployments. Uh, so again, Apple does keep track, uh, depending on how you purchase your equipment. Uh, they will know the purchases that your organization has made. Uh, and this is very handy because you can feed that list right into FileWave. Uh, and FileWave can, and they can essentially, when the machines come out of the box, uh, they can be assigned uh, to essentially uh, enroll into your MDM and pull down all the pieces they need. Uh, this does not always happen to be the case. Sometimes your machines may have bought uh, or Apple doesn't have track of those particular purchases. Um, and in those cases, you would go to the second method, which we talked about, about enrolling them manually. Um, there's a little more I'm going to talk about later, where actually with starting with Monterey, Apple's going to make it a lot easier for you to be able to um, uh, add devices to uh, the Apple automated deployment method. Um, either way, they go through the setup assistant. You can control that process. You can hide certain dialogues. Um, you can ask you know, questions about what services they want to have connected and all that. You can even create default login accounts for the first time. Uh, so you can actually really nicely automate things uh, as well. And the machine uh, naming can be managed as well. So you really can get a nice workflow going there. Uh, what I will point out is uh, you can come back later if you need to. Uh, if a device is in the device enrollment program, but for whatever reason your devices are already deployed, you don't care to wipe them, you don't want to wipe them out, uh, what you can do uh, is there's a command line you can run actually that's called profiles uh, command. You see an example here in this bottom corner here. Uh, I'm going to actually type in what you would do if your machine was already in it, uh, uh, but you wanted to kind of get it, you wanted to kind of get it to, to trigger that again and the machine's already been set up. Uh, so in this case, you'd have a workflow where the device was in, uh, was in the device enrollment program, was set up to set up to go through the process, but someone's already been using it, so you're not going to wipe it. So we have a command called profiles renew. It has to be run as root or you can sudo it. Profiles renew dash type and it's enrollment. And nothing will happen in my case because my particular machine, uh, or we'll see if it might actually do it. Uh, what we're gonna see is if my device was not enrolled in DEP uh, and it was part of that program, I would be getting a message on my screen right now, a notification telling me, hey, uh, I wanna enroll you into MDM. Uh, and I want to manage your device as part of the, of the Apple deployment slash uh, uh, DEP program. Uh, and uh, I would have to accept it as a user and verify it, but for all practical purposes, I would be in the DEP program and I would be user approved. Um, so it's another way of getting devices in after the fact. This is important because prior to Big Sur, uh, versions before Big Sur, um, for instance, if you want to do uh, OS updates via MDM, uh, one of the requirements up till Big Sur was that it must be in DEP. Uh, this would actually now make that happen. Um, so I just wanted to mention that. The other thing is you can actually check your status at any time uh, by running the other command that I have here that's called profiles type, oh, sorry, profiles type, uh, profile status dash type enrollment. This will show you what my enrollment status is. Now this particular machine's not enrolled either way. Uh, but if it was, uh, it would tell me yes. It would say yes if it's, if it's enrolled in DEP. Uh, and then under MDM enrollment, it would actually show me the URL of the server that this particular machine uh, was enrolled to. Um, so that's a good way to do a check to see what 
what's it act, you know, what is your exact status of enrollment. Again, the same information shows up uh, in the FileWave console as well, as you can see on the left-hand side of the window. So um, those are two commands that are very handy. Uh, what about machines you can't get into DEP? So that's where we come to the over air enrollment. Uh, that will be basically uh, the URL of your server. You can gather it uh, by going to your FileWave admin, and you have an option under here. Under uh, It says under iPhone enrollment here. Let me just find it. Enroll iOS device, it's the same URL, but this URL at the bottom here is generally your server name, port 20443 slash iOS. But what happens is when you go to that, uh, it'll prompt you for credentials if you've set it up that way. Uh, and then it will download a profile for you. And that profile can be clicked on. It will install and enroll the device. Uh, you'll be asked to improve, approve it and you say yes, and you're good. Uh, you can also grab what is called a mass enrollment profile, uh, which basically enrolls everyone as basically a, an administrative user. It's just another way of doing it. Uh, and we have, do have tech note articles on that. End result is it's going to pull down a profile. You're going to install that, and you're going to make sure it's approved. Uh, depending on which method you use, you also want to make sure that the agent's already on the machine. Uh, probably in most cases, the agent's already on the machine if you already have it running and these devices are in file uh, So this would be catching things up if they're not already in the MDM side. Uh, the other piece uh, is that I want to mention is that um, uh, with Big Sur now, we have a new term, or a new term on the Mac side. And that term is supervision. Um, so most of you are probably familiar if you have iOS devices with supervision. Uh, and what supervision basically means is when that iPad comes out, it has all sorts of special features that you can restrict. You can hide the app store, you can do this. There's all sorts of things that you can only do if the device is supervised. Uh, and similar to uh, how it is arranged right now on the iOS side, uh, Devices are listed uh, as Apple has figured out how you've acquired them. Uh, and there are there is an ability on iOS where you can actually take a iOS device that may not be in the Apple deployment setup and you can actually add it for 30 days uh, and you have 30 days to decide if it stays there or not uh, after which it stays there permanently. Uh, but essentially it gives you a way to supervise devices that perhaps you bought directly from the Apple store and somehow wasn't associated with your uh, account or maybe you bought it from a reseller that didn't put the DEP um, uh, and, and proper vendor information in or whatever, for whatever reason, the device not being in there. So uh, what they've done in Big Sur uh, is uh, they've now brought supervision to the Mac side. So what is supervision? Uh, basically, it's going to give you these same advanced features of uh, what we talked about with user approved MDM. Um, so you can almost think of user approved MDM uh, is kind of another way of saying uh, supervision. Uh, what I would point out is, uh, and we only start using this term with Big Sur and above, uh, so supervision doesn't really apply to the older Mac OSs, but any devices that were already, um, uh, any devices that were enrolled prior to 1013, so we're going back a few years here, uh, they are automatically going to be uh, grandfathered in as supervised devices uh, for that status. Uh, any devices that were running 1013.4 that weren't uh, set up as approved at the time, uh, if you hit the button that says, yes, you, uh, I'd like to approve, uh, it, then it becomes approved. And then since it's approved, it's considered supervised. Um, and then any devices that run through DEP or Apple deployment, regardless of the method or when they did it, they're, con super, they're considered supervised as well. Um, so starting with Big Sur, one change they did make. Uh, so Apple has supported since 10.11 um, uh, 10, uh, 10 and above, so going back many years, uh, the ability to manage your Mac OS updates via MDM. And they're adding all sorts of new features all the time that are exciting. Uh, but one thing that's nice is you can use the MDM portion to send out the updates. So the machines will be told, hey, go check with Apple. You have an update. Go do it now. Uh, and then the, the client will make a connection to the Apple store and, and do what it needs to do to pull that down. Now, that required always DEP. So up until uh, Big Sur, you had to be in DEP or you couldn't manage those things, uh, for instance, uh, or you had to use other methods like pulling down the packages and then manually uh, you know, pushing them out. Now, uh, with Big Sur, um, the requirement for that same process to work is called if supervision is, uh, if, if, if a device is supervised, uh, you can now use that. And since there is more than one path to make it supervised uh, with 1013 and above, you can now have machines that previously might not have fit into DEP for whatever reason, 
but you are making them supervised because you, for instance, uh, did a user approved MDM, those devices can now uh, take advantage of those Mac OS um, uh, updates that are managed via uh, MDM. Um, I think what I will also show you just so you see what that looks like, because this is kind of an exciting uh, new way to do things here, is if I go under here and I have a find software updates, oops, that's not the one I wanted. If I go to uh, find software updates, and you can see here I have a pop-up here, and you've used, you're used to seeing the Mac OS, Windows, iOS updates. Now we have an additional one called Mac OS MDM. These are MDM driven updates. So we still have our older methods of picking up regular Mac OS updates and such, but these are all MDM related. So what happens is the clients will request them, same as before, uh, but what you can see is I can assign them and these are all dealt with in the, in the MDM, uh, using MDM as the uh, model. And you can see it's going back, uh, I can go back really to whatever version I need to. Uh, so these are another way of doing the updates. Uh, and again, retroactively, that works back to 10, uh, 11 if they are DEP. And with 10, 14 and above, uh, you can have devices now if they are, uh, as long as they're user approved MDM, whichever way they got there, uh, they will do those updates with Big Sur and above. Uh, and most exciting, and uh, I would refer you to the Apple Developer uh, Conference uh, where they actually did a little session on this. Uh, there is going to be a way with Monterey, which is the next version of Mac OS, uh, that you will be able to take uh, a Mac uh, using Apple Configurator on the iPhone, uh, as they showed it. Uh, you will be able to basically uh, take a device out of the box. Perhaps it's not in your Apple deployment system for whatever reason, but when it comes up to the Apple Setup Assistant, you're going to be able to capture that device. Uh, it will be added to your uh, MDM uh and into the dep so that you have the ability to basically uh have it run through and get supervised and get uh pulled into the system uh and then from there do everything you need to do so um there's some exciting stuff happening with that um if you guys would like to chat any further um feel free to reach out to um any of us here at filewave uh and uh we would be happy to help you and with that um thank you very much